If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for new punk rock videos every week and tap the bell to get notified when new videos drop. Miklo and I'm here at Crash Fest with the Warriors. Introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Mark. I'm the lead guitarist for the Warriors. Conrad on rhythm. Saxby vocals. Bo on bass. Thank nice. You. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> well, so we were talking a bit um, off camera about this, but I'd like to share that for everyone watching. I had a bit of trouble finding a paper trail on you guys, but you do have a very long history where you were the original singer in The Last Resort. Is this correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I was uh, the original singer. Uh, I joined Last Resort. Um, well, we, we started about 1979, and I was there till the end of 1980. Um, and we I've done about seven or eight gigs, maybe. And just sing on like about four songs and that's it really and then, and then I left and then but I carried on writing stuff um lyrics for the guys and I used to pop along now and again and sing back in vocals and that was about it really yeah, <laughs> yeah. Share like what you were, we were kind of having a powwow about this and you said that there were the long history of it, of there, there was like some fights and then the, um, the fights with like the management and uh, things. Yeah, yeah. well the, the guys, um, I mean, the guys in the last resort, they, we was all young and we was a bit naive and like um, there was a lot that, you know, um, it seemed like almost every gig was a, was a, almost a riot, you know, it, it got silly in the end and, and every time, and in fact, it, but they lost a few gigs. And in that time in England, it was the summer of 1981, uh, the summer of riots. And uh, it was, they were billing it as the riot comes to your town and things like that, you know, so, and it just got, so that they just, in the end, they said, they said, uh, no, we're not gonna do this no more. And so they sort of parted company with the manager and the drummer was very young. Andy was only 15 and they, and they, they parted company with him and got another drummer. And then uh, it was Christmas 1981, they decided, all right, we're gonna, that's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna call ourselves the Warriors now, you know, they're going to change the name because there was, the last result name was tagged with violence, you know, so they, had to, they changed. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. And then you said like with that, you know, Roy had like long, long hair, which is really hard to picture. Uh, yeah, he didn't at the time, but he uh, initially, yeah, he was, so he did the uh, Warriors stuff and that lasted to sort of about 1983 and then he joined the Foreskins. Yeah. And he was in them for a couple of years, I think, I'm not sure exactly how long. And then, um, and then of course, then uh, he come out of them. Uh, and, but Roy's always loved, um, he's always loved like bands like Rose Tattoo and them, and them sort of bands and, and ACDC and bands like that. And, and then it's all the mid eighties, late eighties. Um, yeah, he did have longer hair and the, the last result brought another album out. It was just called The Result, but it was, it was Roy and um, he was the only original member and the other three guys was all, um, uh, all local guys. Uh, uh, in fact, one of them was in a band that we really liked called The Rivals. And, and uh, but yeah, so that was late eighties. Yeah. And then you were saying that the Warriors originally started in the 80s and then you reformed in 1995. Can you talk about this present lineup and how you guys came together to be playing? We've had this lineup for about, what, four or five years, haven't we, guys? We've been going for quite a while. Yeah, five yeah. years I've been in it. Five yeah, five years. years. Since 2017, it's been this been lineup. Red. Yeah. yeah. And then, Bo, you're actually, did somebody told me that you're American, but you were born in England. It's, I was, yeah. yeah. Uh, I spent uh, a f my early, uh, probably right up to 15 uh, over here. Yeah. And then, because my parents are, my dad's from North Carolina, uh, mother's English from London. Um, yeah, so 
I've had that mixed and all over the place as well. And yeah, it's a, uh, it's all in my blood, my, my music. Um, yeah. And I love being in the warriors now. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't see myself anywhere else. Yeah. It's a great band. Yeah. And, and so where do you guys all presently live? Uh, we're all around Kent, like near the Isle of Thanet, around the old coastal towns and all of that. So yeah. whenever we want to practice, it's only like a 10 minute drive for all of us. Oh, always, that's great. I always tell people we live 20 miles from France. Yeah. yeah. Do you really? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we literally, all of us live within a, what, 15 mile radius, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. We're all really, yeah, we're not far away. So the little sticky out bit at the very bottom of England, that's where we that's live. That's where we live, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, so you guys have been here in America doing some shows. You were playing with Crime Time, right? That's right, yeah. Can you talk about how these shows have been and how your tour has been here? Mental. <laughs> yeah. It's been mental. Yeah. It's been a proper punk rock tour. So, um, unfortunately, I caught COVID for the first half of it. So the guys had already come out to the States. No, so I'm clear. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm it's clear now. Clear. Yeah. I'm, I'm a healthcare professional by trade, so I wouldn't have... Uh, I wouldn't have traveled if I wasn't clear. Yeah. Um, so the guys were out for a full week before I got here and then I came out unaccompanied like Paddington Bear all on my own on a, mm. a transatlantic flight to New York and then via Virginia and Texas and then Seattle. So it's, uh, and then back down here. So, and it, we've been sleeping on floors and all that yeah. sort of proper punk rock stuff. Yeah. There's no, uh, no airs, no graces and... Uh, and certainly no pretensions in that one. <laughs> Luckily, I've got family in Virginia Beach, so yeah. um, I was managed to hook up with them and uh, the rest of the band without Mark. Th thanks to Mark getting COVID, we, we managed to hang out in Virginia Beach for a week. Yes, yes. So it was so, great, yeah. While I was coughing my lungs up, these guys were on the beach. Yes. Sun, yeah. Sun's out, guns out, weren't they? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we managed to avoid the storm there, hope, uh, luckily enough. And uh, yeah. But the Crime Time Boys and the, yeah. the Badass guys, yeah. Uh, we, yeah. we hooked up with those last year. And also 2018, when we first came out to play Crash Fest in 2018, when it was in Oakland. Yeah. Um, so they're friends of ours anyway. So uh, mm -hmm. when they came over during the summer, we, uh, we played a, a show with them. We hooked up with them on their tour. And then uh, they've hosted us and they've been absolutely superlative hosts. They've looked after us absolutely wonderfully and we can't thank both bands enough. Yeah, I was asking them about, about you because I interviewed Crime Time this weekend as well at Crash Fest and they were just like, oh, they're so awesome. We love them so much. Yeah. Likewise, it's oh, reciprocated. Wow. Yeah, They're lovely, cool. lovely people, and they really did look after us. Yeah. Yeah. And we are thankful to them for it. You guys must be stoked then for Crash Fest. Everyone has a nice hotel room, right? No floor, no floors. That's right. No, me, me and Graham <laughs> have been sharing a bed though. Yeah. <laughs> they beat them off a few times. We've kept our pants on though. Yeah, we? we've kept our pants on. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, kids, there's no money in this rock and roll game. Let me tell you, you got to share a bed with these two gnarly dudes. <laughs> yeah. So who's who's the snorer and who's the farter? I think I'm the snorer, definitely. Okay. And who farts? Oh, he's the farter. I, I can. Oh, uh, yeah, Bo oh, yeah. crop dusted the stage. Where it comes from, who knows? He did it on the stage at Which one show? of the gigs. Which show? Where Chris was dying, wasn't he? Oh, he it was at the it. second one. Luckily, I, was put, at the I put the peak. fan on the side of me so the fan blew it across the stage. It was one in Tacoma. It's disgusting. Oh, yeah. It's so disgusting. <laughs> I think you need to check your pants for details, mate. Check oh, that wow. tray, boys. <laughs> Dear Lord, you're trying to do backing vocals and you're sucking in the green. I was all right, I was right up the front. Ass. I didn't even know. I didn't even know. I was lucky. <laughs> he, oh, yeah, he was, he was up when so he's like. Yeah, I was right. <laughs> It's, it's probably all the beer, beer farts. It could yeah. be. All, the, all, this, all this craft American ale. It's all that rich food. Yeah, what is rich American food? What is it about? You've been eating roadkill. Yeah. No, there's no, 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 no. I left, that, I left that raccoon on the side of the road, dude. It's disgusting. <laughs> well, so what songs are you guys looking forward to playing tonight from your set? Do you have any favorites? Easily for me, horror show. So when I was a kid, 
Uh, I bought the... Uh, oi, oi, that's your lot. Yeah, that's the one. It was on I that, bought yeah. Oi, Oi, That's Your Lot on cassette. I've still got it today, and the only standout track on it for me was the Warriors song, Horror Show. Yeah. And I've loved the song since 1981. Absolutely loved it. It's in my top three, and that's no lie. And uh, now I get to play it every night, and that yeah. fills me with... Uh, yeah, yeah. It fills me with Summit, but I love playing <laughs> it, so I'm really looking forward to playing that. Um, so what about you guys? Do you have any favorites from your set? Oh, God. Well, I like um, this one that Mark wrote called uh, uh, Face, Down. Face Down. And uh, it's off the new album. That's a really, really, that's come out really, really well. And I love doing that song. It's a really good song. So we've got song. like ten, 10 albums anyway now. Yeah. I think, yeah. haven't we? Uh, well, it's not yet. Yeah, nine yeah. studio albums yeah. and there's some live albums. But yeah, this one Face Down that Mark, uh, Mark wrote, it's a really good song. And it comes out, I think it's because there's, there's three sort of vocals. There's my vocal and there's sort of two backing separate and it comes, I don't know, it just works. I can't, I don't know why, but it's a really good song. I really enjoy doing it, you know? Yeah. Um, um, it's sort of a plodder. It's, it's not the fastest, it's not the fastest it's song. Good track. Set, no, it isn't, it's a, no. It's a good one though. It's a good one. And another one out, out on the new album as well. So we've got a few there we're doing. Yeah. New yeah, this new album's yeah. come out because obviously because of COVID, um, we couldn't do any gigs. So we sort of, you know, wrote a few more songs. And um, yeah. and then it got to a stage in England where you was allowed to go in a studio and record because that was classed as working. Mm -hmm. So, I know before that, sorry, you was allowed to, six, was it up to six? We could rehearse, couldn't uh, we? Up to six, yeah. yeah. I totally lost so, touch. So we was allowed to rehearse, uh, uh, so we rehearsed the songs and then we went, but we wasn't allowed, we normally used um, Pat Collier in London. Yeah. We wasn't allowed to go to London, that wasn't allowed. So we, we used this new this studio near us. But it turned out really good, this album. This, he's, um, uh, he's, he's in the music uh, business himself, old Dan, but he's, he's um, a lot younger. He's about, where well, Pat's like getting on, uh, Dan's about 40. And, uh, but yeah, it came out really, really well. And um, so we used him basically because of, um, we weren't allowed to go to our normal, uh, one where we normally go. And uh, it turned out nice. The yeah. result was really good. We were really happy with it. Yeah, and so wait, this the new album you have one coming or it's out? No, it's out. No, it's, it's out. out. It came out yeah. earlier this year. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we had to wait. Um, we recorded it last year, but obviously it takes a while for vinyl to come out. That's what it everybody's been saying. It's like the vinyl March. with COVID. We finally got yeah. the we finally got the out album on vinyl in March this year. Yeah. So we're sort of touring that. So we are. <clears throat> excuse me. There is a few of the songs in the set because we're sort of touring that you yeah. know, album. You know. Uh, but it's a good album. Everyone's. Mm. We've had all good reviews of it, so yeah, yeah we're proud yeah. of it. So that's exciting. Can yeah. you talk about your process making this new album aside from the the vinyl delays from from COVID? Uh, well, what we normally do, excuse me, what we normally do is we um, we sort of write four songs. Uh, this is what we've done in previous albums. We sort of write when we got four songs written. We sort of rehearse them, don't we? We rehearse, yeah. them, we rehearse them to so, rehearse, so we rehearse, know them inside yeah. out, and then we go in the studio and, and record them, and, and then we wait till we get the next four and things like that. But this one we because we had so much time on our hands, we just sort of pretty much went in and done all the album in what, yeah. three days, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, just don't, yeah, yeah. We, normally we do a little bit and then go back. This one album took about two years. We did four songs, came back, did another, you know what mm. I mean? But this time we just went in and did the whole lot in. Two, yeah, three days. Three days, yeah. Yeah. Three days to record it, and yeah, then we so just... we took our time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really fast, though, and that's fast that it probably you know costs a little bit less because you're not yeah. burning up studio time. Yeah. Oh yeah. So because we were ready for it, you know, with the COVID thing, you sit at home, and I I sit there with my guitar and just noodle, yeah. and then just record on my iPhone when I get a riff, and then bring it to the guys and go, I got this riff, and they tell me, yeah. nice. No, yeah. Bin it or it's yeah. a good one. Yeah, we copy and paste it, cut and shut and all of that and yeah, make yeah. it a banger. Graham's, Graham's got a, uh, a carrier bag full of lyrics. Yeah, I have, yeah. So yeah. We'll, we'll bring him a tune. He'll delve into his carrier bag, sort through like some kind of homeless guy in a flat yeah. cap, 
pull out a crinkled piece of paper from 1992 and go, I think these fit, and invariably they do, and it really worked this time. So we were able just to yeah. to match lyrics from Graham's bag of goodies. But also because of COVID and things like that. I mean, Out Out, the song Out Out, I, I wrote that because basically we wasn't allowed to go to the pub or anything. So I was sitting in my little man cave, yeah. playing music, drinking beer, and Out Out is about when we get back to normal again and we can all go out drinking and do what we always used to do, you know, because you don't realise what a great life you have until it's sort of taken away from you. you know? And just mm. the simple thing of going to a pub and having a beer, we couldn't even do, you know, couldn't even do that, you know. Mm. And uh, that's all this, that's why the song was written because of that. And uh, and uh, so the songs Mark wrote was because of things happening around the world and that. So it was, a COVID was very bad, but it was, there's so many things happened that um, helped you to write lyrics because if so much was happening you know it's good for the but writing we, process wasn't it yeah 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 because <laughs> some people some bands were you know really stifled by it because they weren't out having experiences yeah so. yeah I, I would say i mean I, I always find i mean we had a little period years ago where britain was lovely and i couldn't write a song because there's nothing to write about but once it goes bad again like it normally is there's loads of stuff to write songs about it's not boring <laughs> now no. <laughs> A song now that the Queen has passed, or are we doing uh, one I about that? About that no. um, <laughs> I think that we should probably leave that one alone. Yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 you, yeah, you, yeah. It could, it's a sweet and sour subject, ain't it? It's, why? Love it. Why people, is that? Because some people love the Queen, some people hate the Queen. Just stay out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, people are just going to get pissed at you either way. Yeah. yeah. I quite like my life without dog poop being pushed through the levels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's all yeah. Good. She, I mean, she was a good queen. It's the only queen we've ever known, isn't it? I mean, yeah, she's yeah, 70 yeah. years, so it's the only queen yeah. we've ever known. And we, we won't see another queen, will we? Not in our There's lifetime. No, it's no, about no. it, because like, uh, like the royal family, loathe the royal family, whichever side of the fence you are, you've grown up with it. It's, it's that normal, and when that normal finishes, yeah. it is really weird. Yeah. She's been the face on the coin. She's been yeah. the face on the notes, you know, stamps, you know, yeah. so it's, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a royalist, but I still found myself watching 10 days of enforced programs going, I never knew she did that. Well, I'll be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's quite weird. So even as a, a non-royalist, I yeah. find it quite strange that she isn't there anymore. Yeah. yeah. It's just something that's always been there for, always your, been there. for your entire yeah. lifetime. 70 years. Then, yeah. Oh, she's always been there, yeah. yeah. Holy yeah. shit, that's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, a, that's a long time to be queen. It is. What else is coming up for the band? Um, well, we haven't, we've only got a couple more gigs this year. Mm. Um, Cause back home, we're still getting gigs canceled because what a lot of promoters are doing, they want people to buy tickets in advance. And unless you're Cox Sparrow or someone like that who sells loads of tickets in advance, pe people don't buy tickets in advance. So, so you're getting these gigs and then people go, oh, we've only sold so many tickets, we're gonna have to pull it, you know? So, so there's, there's not, there's not many gigs left, so we've got a couple more gigs when we get back, and that's all we've got planned really for this year. But we're, we're, we're trying to come over again next year. We're trying to plan yeah. for next yeah. year. In all fairness, it's pretty tough for promoters in the UK at the moment because with the cost of living crisis that's going on back there and here by the looks of things, because my God, the prices have gone up over here since I was last year. Um, if they can't sell tickets, then they can't put the gig on. Yeah. You know, and people haven't got the money because of the cost of living crisis. So they save all their money and go to rebellion or, you know, because they're going to get value for that money. They're going to yeah. see a thousand and one bands in four days. Yeah. And that, I get it. I do get it. It makes sense to me, you know, why people are doing that, why they don't want to come out to the little shows, because no one's got a pot to piss in back there. They're saving their coppers, you know, to go to places like rebellion. And... Yeah. 
make good on them because rebellion's cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's great. I mean, the rebellion's always been really wonderful to me every yeah. every year that I go over. So Likewise it's nice to us, you yeah. know. And I get that people can't afford to come out to shows. They can't afford to travel. And it is tough on the promoters. The promoters have got to pick their fights, you know, when it comes to booking bands. Yeah. And we totally get it. Well, it's sad. It is. It's, <laughs> it's sad, sad, yeah. It's sad. But that's how it is, you know, and you've got to roll with the punches, just like COVID. We rolled with the punches during COVID. Yeah. You've got to roll with the punches during the cost of living crisis. Yeah. Exactly. We'll come through it. We'll be the same ugly five guys that uh, we were when we went into it. A little bit older. A little bit yeah. older. Unfortunately. A little bit skinter, but we'll, we'll still be here. Yeah. <laughs> Fair play to Rebellion Team. That's probably the best one they've ever done. Because, yeah. uh, you know, the last real good one, I thought, they might, how are they going to top that? But then they had this outdoor stage and they had like Ooh. really you know sort of not you know really bigger artists playing like things like Hawkwind and things like that you think wow like yeah. you know yeah so, off the hook man it was yeah yeah it bands was. you would never expect to be there yeah, uh, yeah. playing I managed to see stage, 50 yeah. bands and there was still another 100 I wanted to see you just couldn't see every band yeah there were I mean this year there were 360 bands on the bill was it 360 it was wow. 360 yeah. yeah I saw 52 I think it was so <laughs> that's that's a lot that's a lot yeah. well, I can't Imagine the size of Darren's ulcer putting something <laughs> yeah, like that yeah. together. Yeah, that I wouldn't. Be, I wouldn't, I wouldn't <laughs> yeah, would, no way do you want to be involved in anything like that. It must be. Yeah, oh, well, that's no. why he's got a big team to helping him. Yeah. 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 But no, he played a blinder. Sax is no. right. I think he played a blinder yeah. with the outside stage and everything. Yeah, it was. It was yeah, fantastic. Mm. Well, yeah. I'm going to close with that and say thank you guys so much for taking the time today to talk to me. Pleasure. Oh, Pleasure. Well, yes. Really pleasure. enjoyed it. Thank, Thank you, you very much. We're the Warriors, and you're watching Last Rockers TV.